We're just two weeks into the first quarter earnings season, and you've probably noticed that many companies have been reporting earnings that are better than investors expected. But there are also weak forecasts for the rest of the year, like the one that we got from Apple tonight. With 20 percent of S&P 500 companies already out with their quarterly numbers, how is corporate America doing? Here's Bob Pisani with our earnings scorecard. It was a good day for earnings. Most importantly, big multinational industrial companies like United Technologies, Ingersoll Rand and Illinois Tool Works and others affirmed their 2013 earnings guidance. That's important because these companies sell in many countries. And if there were significant signs of an ongoing global slowdown, they would have spotted it. Now, some have noted that second quarter earnings may be a little bit below expectations, but they expect to make up for it in the second half of the year. Now, we're about one fourth of the way through earnings season so far. Here's the good news. Almost 70 percent of the companies reporting have beat earnings expectations. That's above the historical average. Now, the bad news, only 42 percent are beating on the top line on revenues, and that's way below the historic average of about 62 percent beating. This has been a problem for several quarters now. It means that companies are able to do well on earnings because they've become cost-cutting monsters, not because they are increasing their revenues. Of course, it's good for companies to become more cost-efficient, but the lack of revenues is adding to the employment problem. Companies are reluctant to hire more people when they're not able to sell anymore. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Bob Pisani at the New York Stock Exchange. Here now to talk more about those first quarter earnings results and to look forward is Christine Short, senior manager at S&P Capital IQ. Christine, welcome. Good to have you with us. Great. Thanks for having me. I assume that Bob got it right there that the, that the disappointment, if there is a disappointment, is that revenues have not been growing the way profits have. It's easier to uh, finagle good profits than it is to manipulate the top line, isn't it, Christine? Sure. There's certainly a disparity here between what we've seen with earnings results and revenue results. Uh, as of this afternoon, with all of the companies that reported after the bell, we have 67 percent of S&P 500 companies beating on the bottom line. However, only 41 percent of beating revenues. And just like you said, it's very easy through accounting measures to throw in a special item and create the illusion of having a higher uh, uh, profit than you actually do. However, you can't really manipulate that top line number. And that's what's been particularly concerning this season. Uh, it's kind of deja vu back to the second and third quarter of last year when we saw a similar trend emerging. I think what's also interesting in this earnings season, we're seeing many more companies um, forecasting um, weaker growth going forward for the rest of this year versus, uh, you know, positive outlook. So, you know, what does that mean for earnings growth for the rest of 2013? At the end of the year, what is earnings growth going to look like? That's correct. For the second quarter, 28 companies have uh, provided guidance at this point. Of those, 21 have given negative guidance, only four positive and then three in line. So that gives us a negative to positive ratio of 5.3, and that's the highest negative to positive ratio we've seen in 15 years of data. So much higher than we saw in the last few quarters, and that's a bit disconcerting, uh, of course, but you know, not terribly surprising because at the end of last year companies did warn the first half of the year would be quite weak as in comparison to the second half of the year. So even today with companies that reported we are seeing brighter outlooks for the second half of the year but they do warn uh, Q2 is still going to be quite weak more of the same from what we're seeing in the first quarter. Christine as you look sector by sector who's hot and who's not and can the hot stay hot and will the cool stay cool? Well, telecom is our leading sector right now, and with almost all of those companies reporting, they're up about 10 percent. Of course, we saw AT&T beating on the bottom line today, adding to the overall growth rate. Not much of a story there. There are only eight companies within the sector, um, but they are doing well because of, you know, heavyweights such as AT&T, Verizon, um, Sprint reporting tomorrow, and they're expected to do better this quarter than they did in the year ago quarter. Um, as far as other leaders, we have consumer discretionary and financials after today's reports are actually tied for second as far as leaders go, both expecting 7 percent growth. Within consumer discretionary, it's really the home builders and the retailers that are driving growth there. And then financials, which began the season expecting negative growth, negative 1 percent growth, they're actually up 7 percent after great reports from big banks such as Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup. Um, so that's where the financials have certainly gained as, as companies have come out and report positively within that sector. Looking behind those sector numbers and who's winning and who's not. What is that telling you about economic and business conditions? What are the themes? 
Well, one of the sort of negative themes that we're seeing, and, and despite what Bob said, yes, we did see some um, good reports out of industrials companies today, but overall the industrials are expected to be slightly down year over year, as are the materials. And when you have two sectors that are, are proxies for global growth, um, the, as big as those two sectors are, um, it is sort of disconcerting and just continues what we already know, that there is still weakness in global growth. A lot of these companies still citing Europe and China as sort of growing pains, as areas that they're seeing weakness in, in the first quarter and you know continuing into the second quarter. So I would say those two those two sectors alone um, do paint a rather negative picture. Um, but then it is nice to see consumer discretionary on, on the the other end because it does uh, point to a healthy consumer that consumers are still out there shopping. Christine Short, thank you very much for being with us. Christine is senior manager at S&P Capital IQ.